Something suspicious happened in the middle of Amazon's union election in Bessemer, Alabama. For most of the two-month election, mail ballots trickled in each day to the National Labor Relations Board, a few dozen at a time. But all of a sudden, on February 12, a huge batch of 251 ballots arrived at the NLRB office in Birmingham. The pace of incoming ballots went back to normal. But then, it happened again. On February 17, according to people with knowledge of the election, another huge cluster of ballots appeared at the NLRB, 350 in total, on one day. Sources say these dumps of ballots were overwhelmingly no votes against the union. What was going on here? The answer appears to be a serious attempt by Amazon to manipulate the results of the union election. So serious that it appears very likely that the National Labor Relations Board will overturn the results. And in that event, should the Retail Workers Union demand it, the NLRB could call for the election to be rerun. Why did so many no votes, roughly 20% of all votes cast, suddenly appear on two key dates in February? According to the RWDSU, the only plausible explanation for the vote dumps is that they were the ballots collected from the mailbox that Amazon illegally installed in the middle of the night on the campus of the Bessemer Warehouse. On the second night uh, after ballots went out in the mail, we started getting calls from workers that said like, oh my God, they put this box up here and they're telling everybody to put their ballots in it and we're scared, we don't wanna put our ballots in there. Like who has the keys to the box? Does Amazon have them? More Perfect Union obtained postal service documents about the Amazon mailbox. For no apparent reason, much of the text is redacted. But the documents show that Amazon wanted a ballot box installed as quickly as possible and the documents discuss how to physically manipulate the box to allow for mass ballot collection. As you can imagine, that, that can open it up to a lot of coercion, a lot of intimidation on the part of the employer, compelling or forcing employees to come and use the ballot box um, that they've installed at their location. This mailbox, which Amazon installed in violation of explicit guidance from the federal government, is key to understanding how Amazon illegally coerced workers and manipulated the results of the election. Um, we received reports of intimidation and coercion. We've seen communications where they're, they've essentially threatened that there would be a layoff because of the union. And uh, that, that's what would be considered a hallmark violation of the act. The union election was set to begin on February 8th. But Amazon had been hard at work for weeks prior to that, putting in place a systemic, coordinated effort to engineer the outcome it wanted. Amazon hired a union-busting consulting firm, Labor Information Services, to create classes that workers were forced to attend. Workers were subjected to mandatory anti-union meetings, sometimes two to three times per week. So the entire month of January, you went to one every week. Some people went to more than one a week. Um, they say stuff to you like, everything's on the table when you negotiate with the union. We could take everything away. You know, you could lose your pay, your benefits. Some of those who shared with me on uh, breaks is that they're afraid because Amazon told them in the meeting, uh, the union buster said that if you get the union, then uh, your, your benefits will be taken away. And so some of the younger people are kind of confused of and have been told that the union is a bad thing. When workers asked pro-union questions, managers came back to scan their badges in an apparent effort to document pro-union workers. As I asked like three questions for, to make them tell the truth. Yeah. When I got back to work, uh, the PA came to me. I saw her pass everybody and she came to me and she said, let me see your badge. She said, because when, when they scanned it in the class, yours didn't go through. So she scanned my badge and I watched her. She never scanned anybody else's badge because I was the one that brought out the question that would make them tell the truth about the raises or the union dues and stuff like that. When the election began, the classes were mandated by law to end, but Amazon transitioned to a new phase of its campaign. It compelled Jefferson County to change the traffic light signals outside the Bessemer warehouse to rob the union of one of its most effective messaging tactics speaking to workers at red lights as they headed into the office warehouse. Meanwhile, Amazon pummeled workers with anti-union messaging via text messages, Twitch ads, and notes on bathroom stalls and break rooms. Do it without dues, Amazon propaganda explained. 
Every time we go to the bathroom in, the, in your stall, in the men's bathroom, as soon as you go to the stall, you got an anti-union flyer right there in front of you. You got, you got flyers in the break room. You got when you walking in and walking out, you got big banners saying early vote, vote no. When the election began on February 8th, Amazon deployed a concerted misinformation campaign targeted at its employees. We've seen Amazon try to confuse people by telling them they needed to vote by March 1st, even though the deadline was March 29th. And the reason for that was to try to get people to cast their ballots right after the captive audience meetings and before they've had an opportunity to engage with the union. Amazon felt if workers could be forced to vote quickly, they were likely to vote no. And once they voted no, they were not allowed to go back and change their vote. That's where the mailbox strategy came into play. If Amazon wanted workers to vote early, they needed a way to coerce and compel them to submit their ballots. Not only have I never seen a company install or have a mailbox installed on their property for purposes of mail ballot election, I've never even heard of a company asking for such a thing. Amazon initially asked the National Labor Relations Board if they could install a ballot drop box in the warehouse. The request was denied. When the request was denied, um, uh, went ahead and just disregarded what the board had said to them and installed it themselves. This is the first time I've, I've seen it. And in fact, when I've talked to some of my management side friends on the other side, of, they're all flabbergasted by what really is pretty audacious on the part of Amazon. On the second night of the vote, February 9th, the mailbox suddenly appeared, just steps from the entrance to the warehouse. For workers, it's, it's twofold. It's number one, if I'm a pro-union supporter and I'm putting my ballot in this box, is Amazon gonna know that? Are they gonna track it? Are they gonna steal it? What's gonna happen to my ballot once it gets here? And for those that maybe necessarily wouldn't have voted, maybe they were just kind of impartial to the idea they want to support their co-workers, but they also don't know a lot about the union. But now they've got this manager that's saying, hey, I've noticed you haven't voted yet. You didn't bring your ballot to the box. You should bring it tomorrow. Bring it and put it in the box. The reason why you wouldn't want to have um, effectively have a polling place where the employer at the employer's facility without the supervision of the board is that the employer's supervisors will go around to, to these employees and say, you need to bring your ballot in. You know, you need to make sure you vote and you'll have employees following their supervisor's instructions, bringing in their ballots to work, which they're not supposed to do, and feeling the pressure that they have to cast a ballot uh, for the employer. Uh, and that's what, that's what the, the mailbox being installed at an employer's facility and to be used for the purposes of casting ballots creates this pressure on employees. As the NLRB counted votes, Amazon deployed the last phase of its anti-union strategy. It challenged hundreds of ballots, specific ballots, ballots that were cast after March 1. Amazon was well aware that by March 1, the tide had swung in the union's favor in a major way. And there should be no intimidation, no coercion, no threats, no anti-union propaganda. Knowing that many of the post-March 1 votes were likely yes votes for the union, Amazon's lawyers aggressively challenged them. Amazon won by engaging in exactly the kind of coercion and intimidation that President Biden warned of. Under Section 7 of the National Labor Relations Act, employees are guaranteed the right to decide the question of whether they want to organize or not in an environment free of coercion and intimidation. We haven't heard the last from the courageous workers who took on Goliath. If the NLRB grants a new election, They'll be back, and it's likely they will have the votes to win.